type of alternating current which is referred to as a sinusoidal alternating current. There are two reasons that sinusoidal uh, alternating currents are um, or com uh, understanding uh, them is, is, is so important. One is that when we make alternating current and we make alternating current uh, using generators and in a generator there is a loop of wire which rotates making that current a sinusoidal current. So his, uh, history actually made uh, sinusoidal current so important because this is how we discovered uh, uh, how to produce it. And, and then when we find out other sources of electricity, we have trouble, or we have to go into trouble how to convert it into sinusoidal current. Because, for example, now we are trying to, to use uh, uh, solar power, for example, to produce electricity. But the problem with solar power is that, or so, solar panels, is that it does not produce all the sinusoidal current. It produces really a constant current. So now in order to use it together with all the other sources which we are having now, we should convert to sinusoidal and synchronize it with the, with the generators. So one of the reasons is history. <coughs> there is another reason which is a mathematical reason. And uh, uh, it is that uh, any periodic function, uh, or in principle even not, not periodic function, if we, well you haven't heard of that, they are referred to as Fourier series. So in Fourier series a function can be represented, uh, any function can be represented as a combination of uh, uh, trigonometric functions. Now, <coughs> Think that we extend the period to infinity can be represented as a, a series of trigonometric functions. Now let's recall what series are in general. Uh, you are aware about certain series, power series, right? You can represent a function in terms of power series. What do we call these series? Taylor series, for example, or Maclaurin series. Right. Now, we can select some other functions to represent uh, functions as series. And if we choose trigonometric functions, now those of you who are advanced in math uh, maybe know what do we call these series. Series in which the uh, uh, terms are sine functions and cosine functions. What are they? All right. So, for a sinusoidal alternating current, both voltage across an element and the current through the element are sinusoidal functions of time. Now, <coughs> doesn't, it, doesn't it look like uh, I'm redundant here? I'm saying that for a sinusoidal current, current is a sinusoidal function. Now, actually, <coughs> uh, well, let me bring you, bring a puzzle which, or question which a student asked me once and, uh, and it will clarify again wh wh that, it, that everything here is all right. The uh, student asked me, uh, a student asked me uh, what is more dangerous, current or voltage to a human body? What actually can kill, current or voltage? Well, think for a moment, and we will vote. So who thinks that voltage kills? Who thinks that current kills? Why do you think that current kills? And they, I mean, without voltage... <coughs> now, it is true current kills. Uh, but now let me ask you, which current kills? The one in amperes?
dance current which is expressed in Amper's kills. Who believes that? Who believes that another current kills? Ah, you have no opinion now. <laughs> it's the other one. Current measure in, measured in amples, amperes is as harmless as voltage. Voltage is an abstract concept. Current measured in amperes is an abstract concept. An abstract concept cannot do anything. It's the phenomenon current. Uh, which kills. Yeah, so it's the other current. Yeah, the, the process, the moving, the moving charges are going to kill, not the rate at which they move. Uh, also, therefore, also here, a sinusoidal alternating current. Also, this is AC current. This is the flow of charged particles. Uh, the flow of charged particles and if it is a sinusoidal flow of charged particles, voltages across elements and uh, currents through those elements are going to be sinusoidal functions of time. I mean, it's not exactly true because there are elements, we have elements for which uh, they don't have the really sinusoidal function. We'll, they will maintain per the same period, but uh, won't be uh, like in a diet for example current is going to flow only one way so we will have only half of the sinusoidal function <coughs> the most general form of a sinusoidal function is like that so here I wrote function for the potential difference there is a certain number here there is a trigonometric function a number variable representing time and a number. You cannot make it more general than that. And <coughs> for sinusoidal alternating current, both quantities have the same form. Not only that they have the same form, but oh, these two numbers are equal. This number in front of T uh, in potential difference and in the current have the same value. Now, I want you to learn the names of all those numbers because all those numbers have a name. Um, the number which is <coughs> in front of the trigonometric function is called the peak value of, uh, of that quantity. So Vm is peak value of the potential difference. Im is the peak value of the Current. Um. And if we look at the plot, it is referred to as peak value because, well, the highest value which sine function can assume is 1. So if sine is 1, then potential difference is equal to peak value or the, the quantity is equal to its peak, peak value. So if you, if you look at, uh, at the plot, peak values are the highest values on the plot of the two uh, electrical quantities. The argument of the uh, sinusoidal function is called the phase of that electrical quantity. So omega t plus delta v is the phase of voltage omega t plus delta i is the phase of current uh, omega uh, is referred to as angular frequency of that current and uh, it is related I mean it is referred to as angular frequency because it is proportional to frequency. We just did, we just don't <coughs> want to have a number 2 pi f, 2 pi times frequency, where frequency says how many oscillations occurs in a second. So f is a number of oscillation in a second. It is referred to as frequency. If we multiply this number by 2 pi, in principle it also reflects frequency, but in order to make a distinction, from the frequency which says how many oscillations we have, we call it 
uh, angular frequency and the reason is just convenience so that we don't have two pi in the in the formula we have single single number omega in the uh, in that formula but <coughs> well how about how about well think about if uh, why don't we imagine that this number is zero and think that omega is one? Uh, uh, oh no, Let, let's make it one over, uh, or just two pi. Two pi. Think how many seconds does it take for the voltage to, re to, to complete one oscillation? So, at instant zero, sign of, z sign of zero would be zero right now after let's say half a second well let's make one quarter of a second we would have sine of pi over two sine of pi over two is how much one right so uh, so the value changes to one to the highest value now let's take uh, half a second so we will have sine of pi. Sine of pi is how much? Zero. It returns to zero, but it went just up and down back to zero. Let's take now uh, uh, three quarters of a second. After three quarters, if I plug in three quarters of a second, I will get minus one. So it will drop below. And when I take one second, it will come back to zero. Right, so in one second, the uh, voltage completed single oscillation. So frequency is one, and angular frequency was two pi. <coughs> All right. Uh, this angular frequency, if you look at the plot, says how how much time does it take for an electrical quantity to complete an oscillation which means to return to the same uh, phase well actually I'm, I was kind of because phase is, is measured with, with uh, it's a number between uh, 0 and 2 pi so if it exceeds 2 pi then uh, uh, we reduce it by 2 pi or all the time alright now the, the last number which we have is that the delta and the, the delta refers to as initial phase of that electrical quantity. Well, and again, uh, like uh, with initial velocity or initial position, it doesn't much m make much sense. Initial refers to the instance to which we assign time equal zero. So if we plug in time equal zero, <coughs> then phase of that electrical quantity is going to be equal to the uh, initial phase and the initial phase actually says uh, well what is which way is the plot is shifted from a, from a nice sinusoidal function <coughs> now we can actually even figure out how how about if we think about uh, the what is the phase initial phase of the current uh, of the voltage sorry is it positive, negative, or zero? Who votes that it's positive? Who thinks that it's negative? Who thinks that it's zero? Actually, it's, posi it's positive. Here yeah, at t equals zero, we have already a positive value of sine functions. Yes, yeah, so if this term is zero, sine is positive, which means that this number must be already positive somewhere between 0 and pi over 2 for the current initial phase is negative yeah because uh, we have that we, when we plug when we plug in 0 we got a negative value for sine function which means that the argument of the sine function has to be a negative number